let me show you the full HDR post-processing workflow for this image in Lightroom. As always, feel free to follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's start. So why is it important that we make use of HDR? Check out this raw file. Looking at histogram, you can see there's a tiny bit of underexposure and a little bit of overexposure as well. If we would want to fix that, we could bring down the highlights all the way and it kind of looks good on the histogram, but zooming in, you see all the information right here in that bright area is lost and there is no way to recover it from this single raw file. On the other hand, Fixing the darker unexposed areas is a little bit easier with digital raw files. We can just bring up the shadows and the blacks and we get quite a bit of detail out of this file. However, it does look a little bit funny. So in order to get higher image quality, what we want to do is to merge an HDR file. Luckily for us, this is very, very easy with Lightroom. All you need to do is to shoot an HDR sequence like you can see down below. So this would be our base exposure. Then we do have a few other images with this one getting darker and this even more dark because we want to use this to recover all the details from those highlights. Of course, this means we don't have any details in the shadows, but for that reason, we have two other shots which get progressively brighter until we have something that looks like this. Of course, here the highlights are completely blown out, but you can see all the details we need in those very dark shadows in that tree. So all we need to do with this HDR sequence is we want to select all the thumbnails. I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on the last image in the sequence. Then just right click and choose photo merge HDR. Right here in this window, there is not much we can do. We want to auto align the images, but we probably don't want to use e-auto settings because then Lightroom would just automatically adjust the exposure of this image. What I want to do is to just hit the merge button now. Lightroom then creates a new file with all the information in the highlights and the shadows combined of the five images we have merged. So with this image, we can do a lot more to get the exposure right. Let me start this by changing the profile, going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will kind of lessen the contrast a little bit, which in turn means we do have more control over the contrast ourselves. Then I want to work on the white balance for a moment. At this point, the image looks a little bit too cold, so we want to change that by bringing up the temperature, giving the highlights more golden tones. Okay, this looks much better. Now let's keep on going with the exposure. Again, we want to take a look at histogram and it looks quite good except for a little bit of overexposure in the highlights. However, that's not my first concern. First, I want to make the whole image a little brighter so we get to see more things in the darker areas of the foreground. So I'm going to simply raise the exposure. We don't need to raise it too much, just a little bit is enough. Of course, raising the exposure will in turn result in more overexposure in the brightest areas. But that's where the HDR file comes in handy. We can now simply bring down the highlights as much as we want until there is no overexposure left. Just like this, for example. However, at this point, we are losing a little bit too much contrast for my taste. So I want to bring them back up a little bit just around here maybe. So we still have a little punch left in the highlights. Then for the darker areas to bring out even more details, I'm going to raise the shadows. Right about here looks quite good. Again, we are losing contrast, but in this case, raising the darker areas gives the image a softer look. And this in turn just helps with foggy scenes like this. But of course, that's just personal preferences. If you like to have more contrast, don't raise the shadows that much. Now for me, I want to continue raising those darker areas by bringing up the blacks. Just a little bit. Wonderful. And this is pretty much the image after just a bunch of exposure adjustments. So we started with the image on the left. You can see it's quite a bit darker. 
and the exposure is not that well balanced. However, it does have more contrast and is a little more saturated. So let's keep on working on our image. I want to add a bit of texture which will give details like those tree branches a little more sharpness. At the same time, I want to bring down the clarity and the dehaze just a little bit, which in turn adds a little more foggy atmosphere to this image. And of course, we want to bring up the vibrance to bring back saturation. Perfect. Now we're pretty much done with the basic adjustments. What I want to do next is to do a little bit of masking. So for this image, there is not much going on. However, I want to make the blue part of the sky darker and in turn, just adding more contrast to the upper half. So I'm going to choose a color range mask and just click somewhere in the blue area. This is selecting a little bit too much for my taste. So I'm going to make use of the refine slider, bring it down a notch. And I also want to say subtract and linear gradient because I really only want the top part to be darker, just like this. Now with this mask, all I need to do is to bring down the exposure and we get this very cool looking polarization effect. We can make this even stronger by bringing up the contrast. Maybe not that much, but this seems about right. Okay, that looks pretty. Let me add one more mask. I'm going to choose a radial gradient and I want to cover the very brightest spot of the image right there. What I want to do here is to bring up the blacks further, which will make this particular area a little softer and just makes it appear to be glowing. So this should be enough. If you want, you can also add some more warmer tones to this spot by clicking on this color box. Let's set up the hue to something warm just around here maybe, and we can bring up the saturation to make the color a little more visible. Wonderful. And that's it for the masking. You see, there is not much going on, just some more contrast being added on top of the sky. Now we can also do a bit of color grading. So let's continue in the color mixer. In the saturation tab, I want to bring up most of those warmer tones, orange, yellow, green, and I also want to bring up the blue tones for the sky. Okay, that looks great. We can check out the luminance tab. In here we can make the blue part of the sky even darker, but just bringing down the blue luminance a notch. Perfect. Now, usually I'm a big fan of split toning in the color grading tab. However, for this image, I have a feeling this is a bit too much. I want to try it with the highlights, giving them a warm hue. So something like this, and I want to bring up the saturation. This, however, also affects those bright white clouds in the sky, which I think looks kind of weird. I want to, I want the clouds to be pure white. So I am not going to raise the saturation as much, just a little bit like this. Perfect. And finally, we can also check out the calibration tab. Here, what I always like to do is to bring down the blue primary hue and let's raise the saturation. Wonderful, that looks awesome. Now we could sharpen this image, but I think for a foggy landscape like this, it's really sharp enough. What I also like to do for some final retouching of my landscape images is to apply some knee collection plugins. So we can actually do that in Lightroom. I just need to right click, go to edit in, and here we are choosing Color Effects Pro 4. So using this plugin, we can give this image some more punch. Let's start with the Pro Contrast filter, which is a very, very popular one amongst landscape photographers. We just want to bring up the correct contrast slider a notch as well as the dynamic contrast. So let me deactivate this. It's very, very subtle, but it really helps to make the image pop. And one more effect I'd like to add is the polarization effect, which will make the colors a little more saturated and again, just helps to add more punch to the image. This looks wonderful can especially see this effect right there in the center 
with the golden light rays coming from behind the trees. And once we have set up this, let's just hit save. This looks really awesome. Of course, there's a sensor spot that's really annoying. So we can fix that in Lightroom, but I want to do that in Photoshop. I don't think I need to show how to do that. So that's it for this tutorial about HDR editing. I hope this was helpful and interesting as always. If you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.